Hello, welcome back. In this next section, we're going to go over how to compute the cash flow statements for a company. There are two ways to compute cash flows. So primarily what we are interested in is the cash flows that comes to, to into the entire firm. So and the, the uh, we call that cash flow from assets. So this is the ultimate goal, so cash flow from assets. Um, you can think of it similar to the cash flow, the balance sheet identity. You can think of it as the cash flow identity. This is the entire cash flow for the firm, and there are two um, recipients to those cash flows. The first is cash flow to creditors. So this is the bondholders, the bank, any, anybody that the company owes money to. And then the second is cash flow to stockholders. So all the cash flow that is generated from the asset of the firm for the entire firm will be distributed either to creditors or to stockholders. So this is the first cash flow identity. Another way to look at it is um, how do we generate those cash flows? So this is also cash flow from asset. So you can, this is how, where cash flow come from. Uh, cash flow can be generated from three sources. One is operating cash flow. So this is from the day-to-day -day operation of the firm. So operating cash flow is defined as earnings before interest and tax. Again, important to know the different terms that we use for earnings before interest and tax. This can sometimes refer to as operating income, and sometimes this is called income from operations. So all of those means the same thing. So the important thing to understand is that this is earnings and income that is generated from the day-to-day -day operation of the firm. Uh, plus depreciation minus taxes. So this is money uh, cash that the firm brings in. The second item is we subtract net capital spending. Net capital spending is defined as ending net fixed assets minus beginning net fixed assets plus depreciation. You can think of this as reinvestment in the firm. So a company generate cash flow from its day-to-day -day operation, and then you may have to update its equipment. You have to reinvest some of those cash flow back into the firm uh, so that the firm can continue to function or even to grow. The last item is addition to networking capital, and we went over how to compute that earlier. Addition to networking capital is defined as ending networking capital minus beginning networking capital. Again, that represents an investment. You may have to build up more inventory. You may have to extend more credits to your customers. So the amount of cash flow that is generated from asset is amount of operating cash flow minus reinvestment in fixed assets on net capital spending and reinvestment in networking capital. What is important is that this two number has to be the same. So cash flow from asset is cash flow from asset. So you can compute cash flow from asset either looking at what creditors receive and what stockholders receive, or you can compute cash flow from asset looking at the cash flow generated from operation minus investment in uh, fixed assets and networking capital. Now let's take a look at how do we compute cash flow to creditor. Cash flow to creditor, and the word here is important, this is to creditor. So this is cash flow going to the creditor. So is money that we pay our creditor is interest paid, and then we also subtract from it net new borrowing. So how do we compute net new borrowing? The way we compute net new borrowing is the same way we compute any net number. We take the ending total liability or ending total debt minus beginning total liability or beginning debt. So we take the, and since this item is typically the same from year to year, um, we actually can look at did the company pay down its debt or did it borrow more? So this is cash flow going to creditors. So if a company paid down its liability, then this this number will be negative. So and 
because you're subtracting a negative number, you'll be adding that to the cash flow you pay the creditor. This is rather unusual in the business world, and that's why this formula is set up in this way. Typically, in the business world, company will increase its borrowing as the company grows in size, um, and company seldom reduce its liability. So that's why um, cash flow to creditor is designed in this format. Typically, uh, this is a positive number for most growing companies. Lastly, we're going to look at cash flow to stockholders. Very similar to cash flow to creditors, cash flow to stockholders primary, primarily consists of dividend and then also net new equity raise. And this is important. Net new equity raise here focuses on new equity, so it does not include retained earnings. So what we are looking at, remember the balance sheet statement. If you don't have your balance sheet statement open, um, I suggest you pause the video. We're going to go and take a look at. So when we talk about addition, uh, net change in equity or net new equity issue, we are talking about only common stock and pay in surplus. So if you look at this example, it will be this item. We do not include accumulated retained earnings in, this, in determining this number. Again, think of the purpose of what we are trying to. The keyword here is net new equity raise. Addition, accumulated retained earnings is not new equity. That is, that is uh, earnings and equity that is built up by the operation of the firm. In here, we are focused on new equity that stockholders bring into the company. Again, that doesn't happen very often. And for a company, for a, for a growing company, it may raise new capital from time to time, but most of the time, this number is unlikely to change. Uh, so that means the majority of the cash flow to stockholders is dividends paid. Occasionally, a company, a company will conduct a stock repurchase. When a company does conduct a stock repurchase, then the net new equity will go down and this number again will be negative and that amount will be added to dividend to become cash flow to stockholders. Once again, that is a very uncommon event. So now you know how to compute the cash flow identity and all the individual parts. So you know how to compute cash flow to creditors, cash flow to stockholders from which you can compute cash flow to assets. Uh, you also know how to compute operating cash flow here uh, and how to compute net capital spending in addition to networking capital. Um, and that will allow you to compute cash flow from asset. So you can compute cash flow from asset using either of these equations and the answer should always be the same. So here is the good news of accounting. We'll stop the video here. In the next video, we're going to go over an example on how to compute um, cash flows using these formulas. Uh, oh, before, before I go, I want to strongly encourage you to write down these formulas in your formula sheet so that you have it in front of you and handy as we go through the example.